About three years ago, I was standing right here when the idea of inventory first occurred to me. I was complaining about the fact that I used to work as a server and back then in my early 20s, I could remember up to eight people's orders. I would not need to write down anything. I would go to the computer, put it in, and only one time in my three years of being a server did I get a meal wrong one time in three years. And I was comparing that to more recently where I can't even remember if leftovers are going bad in my fridge, let alone the stuff at the back of my pantry cabinet. And I realized that I was trying to manage too much inventory and I was just thinking of it in terms of groceries and I thought, why not just leave the extra groceries at the store and not have to manage so much so that I'm not always forgetting about it. Shortly after that, I realized that everything in our home is inventory that we have to manage and the fridge was not the only place that I was forgetting about things. And it turns out that this idea actually has resonated with many others in a recent survey that we did of Minimal Mom viewers. We asked what mindset shift or tactic has been the most helpful for you when it comes to decluttering? And hands down, the number one answer was the idea of inventory. So this is video three in our Minimalism Back to Basics series, and we're gonna talk all about inventory today. So like I said, this idea of inventory has been life-changing for so many, so I definitely wanted to dedicate a full video to it. So today, we're gonna talk about why does inventory matter? We're gonna use the term cognitive load because that can explain a whole lot. I'm gonna ask you a few questions, how you can know if your inventory has crept up too much, and also, what are the downfalls of having too much inventory? We'll also answer some frequently asked questions that come up with inventory as well. When I look back about eight years ago, before we found minimalism, I was a stay-at-home mom and we had four kids ages four and under. And on any given day, if you would have stopped by our townhouse, you would have seen a family room covered in toys. My office did not look much better and I would have tried to keep you from looking into the kitchen because there were dishes and food and everything. Our house was a mess and I was so tired of cleaning it up. And I realized that that mess told me a lot about myself. From it, I started to believe that I was messy and that I was lazy. Certainly I was unorganized. And I even took it so far as to believe that I wasn't a good mom and definitely not a good wife. And so this extra inventory in the form of all of this clutter was telling me these negative things about myself. However, now I can look back, now that I have a better understanding, and realize that I wasn't messy, lazy, or unorganized. I was just trying to manage too much inventory. I'm a naturally messy person. I don't love giving a lot of attention to housekeeping and I was trying to manage too much. Now, eight years later and with 85% less stuff in our home, I have found a great balance where I really actually enjoy keeping our house and on any given day you can stop by and it actually looks pretty good. <laughs> but again, it's not because I've found a great cleaning routine or hired a maid. It's because I lowered the inventory in my home to a very manageable amount for me. And so it's important to understand that the level of inventory that each of us can manage is unique to each of us. It depends on what season of life are we in, how much energy do we have, and what other things are mentally pulling from us, which leads us to this idea of cognitive load. Now, cognitive load refers to how much working memory do we have. I've also referred to this as bandwidth, and sometimes I've made fun of before it, right? So we talk about seasons of life and bandwidth, but more technically, you could call it cognitive load. In fact, our brains like order and constant visual reminders of disarray deplete our cognitive resources, limiting our ability to focus. That's why feeling cluttered is a sign of cognitive overload and it can reduce the focus of working memory. And it's really fascinating if you learn more about this, they'll say that those who have diabetes have a very high cognitive load because they always have to be aware of their blood sugar. So if you or someone you know has diabetes, then this might resonate with you. It's always in the back of your mind. There's not a day or an hour that goes by that you don't have to be aware of your blood sugar. Now, fortunately, there's tools that are making it a little bit easier to monitor, but this takes up a big chunk of your cognitive availability for the day or your bandwidth. Similarly, if you're caring for a loved one or you're in a very stressful season of life right now, you have a stressful job, you're going back to school, you have children that you're caring for, 
or other things that place big demands on your time and energy, you're also going to notice diminished cognitive abilities. So again, there's nothing wrong with you. We just have to realize that there might be seasons where we're not able to manage as much inventory or manage as many physical items compared to other seasons of life. Now, my hope is that this is actually very liberating to you. So if you have many things pulling from your cognitive abilities right now, wouldn't it be a kindness to yourself to highly streamline the areas of your life that you do have control over? So what if it was very easy to get dressed in the morning because you had very few options? What if it was super easy to make your lunch or decide what pair of shoes to wear today because you had limited options? What if it didn't take a long time to tidy up your kitchen or your bathroom or your living room because you had such low inventory in there? So I believe there is so much wisdom in matching the level of inventory of stuff in our house with our current season of life and understanding the things that are pulling from our time, our mental bandwidth, and our physical energy. Now you might be thinking, well, I might have a little too much inventory, but what's the big deal? Well, there's a lot of research now that shows the negative impact of clutter on our mental health. For example, in a cluttered environment, our stress levels go up along with feelings of anxiety. We're also less focused and we're also more likely to be short with family members or other people living in our home. You're also more likely to procrastinate and you might find that you have more difficulty controlling impulses. And overall, people that live in a cluttered environment report a lower quality of life. So there's actually kind of a lot on the line. Now, if you're wondering if you have too much inventory, here's a few questions that might help you. Do you own anything that you never use or no longer need? Like clothes that don't fit anymore or outdated electronics. Do you have a junk drawer or closet full of things that you think you might need someday but never use? Do you find yourself buying new items to replace items you've lost in your house? Do you lack access to certain spaces in your home, like not being able to park a car in your garage or use a guest bedroom for guests? Are you afraid to have visitors or house guests because of the messy state of your home? Now, most of us can answer yes to these questions, but again, that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with us. It just means that stuff is very easy to acquire and we've probably let the inventory in our house creep up. Okay, so if you're thinking that you might have too much inventory in your home, of course, in the previous video, we talked about how to declutter it, but let's answer some questions that often come up with this topic. So question number one, how do I know how much inventory I can manage right now? So when I was first decluttering, in our house, I wanted every room in our house to be able to be pulled together or tidied up in five minutes or less, or maybe a little bit longer for the kitchen. So I kept decluttering until I reached that point. It turns out I had to go a lot further than I initially thought, but the good news is that I got rid of about 85% of our stuff and I don't miss any of it. Question number two, what about items that I hope to use in the future? As humans, we have a way of glamorizing the future. We think that when we enter a new season of life, then we're gonna have more time to finish or do the things that we've always wanted to do, to finish the scrapbooks or the quilts or any number of items. But what I wanna encourage you is that someday seldom comes. What I hear from those of you who are further down the path is that you get to a season where the kids are out of the house or you're retired and there are other things that are pulling from your time and energy and you still don't get to all the things that you had hoped to. So I would encourage you to pick one hobby or area of interest to keep items just for that and to be willing to let the others go, trusting that living right now in a highly simplified home is gonna benefit you way more than hanging on to all of these items for someday. Are kids impacted by this idea of inventory? Yes, absolutely. If you find that your kids are irritable, crabby, or don't play well with their siblings or other kids, it could be a sign that they too have too much clutter around them. In fact, if you look at the research, kids actually thrive in highly simplified spaces. They're more creative, they're more content, they play better with others, they're more creative, they're better problem solvers, and more intelligent. So we'll do a whole video on kids and kids' toys, but there's actually a lot of evidence that suggests that kids do really well in highly simplified spaces. Where is the best area to test out having less inventory? So I always recommend the kitchen, your clothes, and kids' toys. So again, we wanna think about this idea of cognitive load. Remembering that every time you make a decision, like what to make for dinner, what coat to grab as you head out the door, that is taken away from your cognitive bandwidth. And so for me, I don't wanna use my precious mental energy on decisions that just don't really matter. So I want my clothes to be highly simplified so that it's very easy to get dressed in the morning. I want everything to fit and for me to feel good in it. I want the kitchen to serve me. I wanna just have in there things that I'm using for this current season of life and for kids 
these toys, like we just talked about, I think you too will find that your kids love having a highly simplified space to play. So again, I hope that this idea of inventory and managing inventory is very helpful for you. There is nothing wrong with you. You're not messy, lazy, or unorganized. You've just been trying to manage too much inventory. And there is so much freedom that comes when we match the amount of inventory in our house with the current season that we're in. So if you're ready to get started, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the minimalist kitchen.